Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Welcome to my guide on how to beat floor 11 and 12 of the 4.4 cycle. This time, both the infamous Ruined Serpent and Waynut are back in floor 12. Fun. There are also waves of various enemies like mechs, eremites, and more, so as usual, this guide will discuss some tips and strategies that you can use to hopefully give you an easier time in these chambers. Let me just flash some general reminders before you tackle Spiral Abyss, which you can pause to take a quick read. This Abyss Blessing will count the number of times a character receives healing, and every 16 counts, it will deal a shockwave of true damage, so having a dedicated healer can help you take advantage of this. Starting with Floor 11, it grants you a 75% animo damage bonus. With the exception of the Defend the Monolith Chamber, the first half is mainly composed of two large targets per wave. So whatever team you have that can deal potent AoE damage will be very good here, and even single target focus teams can work as well. Here I went in with a classic Reverse Melt team. The second half has mobs with innate elemental auras and shields, so an animo unit for swirling elements and crowd controlling will be very helpful here. Otherwise, elemental counters versus the pyro and cryo abyss mages, such as hydro electro and pyro electro respectively, will help you. But in general, teams that are great with mobs or multi-target scenarios can perform very well. In this half, I brought in the sucrose hyperbloom team. Starting off, Chamber 1 is another Defend the Monolith, and there's no timer here, so just focus on the Monolith's health. The first half summons waves of a Mighty Churl accompanied by two Hilly Churls, and they spawn in a clockwise pattern. The Mighty Churl can be aggroed, while the Hilly Churls will generally target the Monolith, so attacking the Mighty Churl before it reaches the Monolith can distract it away, and the Hilly Churls can be caught in your AoE damage. But also, if the Churls get too close to the Monolith, attacks that can stagger and interrupt them will help avoid more damage to the Monolith. The second half spawns small slimes. There's a lot of them, but they're not much of a threat and are easy to kill with AoE damage. Bringing an animal crowd controller can especially help you cheese this part by swirling them against each other. But as long as your team has sufficient AoE, they can finish the numerous slimes off quite easily. In this next chamber, the first wave spawns two Geo Bishops in front of you. You can edge bait behind the spawn point because that's where the next wave spawns. If you do this, the Geo Bishops will run or jump to you, but you can also just run straight to them and finish them off there if you don't want to wait. The next wave has two Bethesmal Bishops, and they tend to move around a lot. So here, I edge baited them to limit their movements and used my AoE attacks to hit them simultaneously. You also want to dodge their projectile attacks since they'll drain your energy. For the second half, the first wave spawns in front of you with Hydro Slimes surrounding a Pyro Abyss Mage. If you can swirl the slime's Hydro onto the Abyss Mage, it can very quickly destroy its Pyro Shield. Otherwise, elemental counters for Pyro, like Hydro or Electro, will break the shield quickly. Then you can deal with them all with AoE attacks. The second wave spawns on the other side, and it's a similar situation. We have Pyro Slimes surrounding a Cryo Abyss Mage. Again, swirling their auras will help a lot, but countering the Cryo Shield with Pyro or Electro will also work. For the last chamber on this floor, we have two flying ruin drakes. Although they're flying, their tails fortunately hang down, so you can still hit them even while they're airborne. They move a bit slowly, so it was more straightforward to start with one and kill it first. However, if you want to fight it on the ground, then you can hit its weak spots with an archer, which are at the wings, and during some attacks, appear on the chest and head as well. Either way, it's the last chamber, so you can go all out with bursts for full damage. Then this half is made up of Potioneers and Mirror Maidens. The first wave spawns its Mirror Maiden near the far end. I recommend focusing on the Mirror Maiden since the Potioneers will slowly walk towards you as you attack her, so your AoE abilities will likely hit them as well. Be careful of where their projectiles land because they can take you by surprise with how much damage they deal to you and can even freeze you in place. When you kill the first Mirror Maiden, another will spawn on the opposite side. <laughs> 
Again, focus on that mirror maiden, because as soon as she dies, the last mirror maiden will spawn and the potioneers will walk towards you anyway. Watch out for the mirror maiden's cages as well. Getting stuck in them also leaves you prone to the potioneers' projectiles. Moving on to floor 12, for the first half, a lot of stuff will be a DPS check, and the most noticeable elemental counter needed will be against the Breacher Primus and its Dendro Shield, which you can counter with Electro, Hydro, or Pyro. Your team can generally be AoE or single target focused since it mainly has waves of two large enemies at a time, but AoE will be really effective since most of them are already closely grouped together. I'll be using the same reverse melt team here. The second half, well, fortunately single target focused, also has the annoying bosses. Veterans will already be familiar with how to beat them, but for those encountering the Abyss versions of the Waynut and Ruin Serpent for the first time, this might be a challenge. For some general tips regarding your teams, against the Ruin Serpent and Waynut units that can deal lots of damage in short periods of time will be preferable, and auto-targeting constructs like Yai's turrets or Farina's pets can make it easier to whittle down their health as they appear or help track their location. For the Waynut, you'll need at least a Pyro, Hydro, Electro, or Cryo unit to bring it down when it starts flying, as you need to hit two of its balls with one of those elements. That can be a bow unit's aimed charged attack, an ability with splash damage, or a vertical hitbox. You could bring an animal unit along who will swirl an element on the waynut to deal splash damage on those balls too. Then the most general way to bring down the drake is to bring an archer to manually aim at its weak points. The first wave spawns two construction mechs, and these deal cryo damage with Usia alignment. I found the most consistently best result to start with the left side. They walk for a bit and stop, one does its range attack, the other is melee, but they're close enough that you can hit them simultaneously if you have large AoE abilities or just get them one at a time. If you have a freeze team, then that should help a lot in keeping them in place. If you also have a Numa aligned unit, then that can disable them temporarily. Otherwise, they tend to wheel around a bit, and it's random how they go. After the mechs are gone, two Breacher Primus will spawn in the middle. They generally stay close together, so dealing damage to them simultaneously should be pretty easy. You can also destroy its Dendro Shields with Electro, Hydro, and Pyro, or just hit it with a Numa or Usia attack, which will disable and make them more vulnerable. Dodge this! Don't get frostbite! The second half has our first stall boss, the Ruined Serpent. Its annoying and random disappearing acts make it hard to deal sustained damage to it, and you have to deal a lot of damage within its vulnerability periods if you want a fast clear. Generally, there are some animations that are more favorable for doing damage, like when it stabs down its tail and arcs its body, or when it does the rolling animation. Ranged units can also help a lot since there are times when the serpent flies upwards and your melee attacks may not reach it. One way to disable it is by aiming for the glowing weak point during its circling animation, but this can also be difficult. It may just be easier and more straightforward to brute force it with your unit's abilities, and there's a good chance you'll hit the weak point anyway. It also has some animations that will waste your time more than usual, like when it makes a vortex in the ground, so if you're unlucky with these and aren't able to full star it, you can always come back later. The next chamber starts with two Eremite Masters. Target the ranged female one first since the melee one will naturally go towards you, which will group them together. Defeat the summon monsters as well as that will disable them and deal a lot of damage. The second wave are just two Eremite Masters again. It doesn't really matter that much which one you prioritize here. The Dendro one creates a prison which can be annoying, but it's not much of a big deal, especially when you're dealing AoE damage to all of them and their summons anyway. Frostbite. 
Now it's time for our second stall boss, the Waynut. This fight is mainly about recognizing the Waynut's attack patterns. First, it spawns at the center, either doing its vertical or horizontal movements. During these times, you can take bot shots or set up some reactions. Second, it will re-emerge generally near your position for a quick drive-by, which you can take pot shots as well. Third, it will come up vertically around the side farthest from you, so you can generally predict its position and preemptively move there. This is where I prefer doing a lot of damage since it stays still. Fourth, it will emerge once more, which is a good time to get particles and ready your bursts. After this, it'll come up for its floating state. When the Wayna goes into its floating state, it conjures these animal balls. As mentioned before, applying Pyro, Hydro, Electro, or Cryo to at least two of the balls will bring down the Wayna, or you can apply an element to the Wayna and swirl that element which will deal splash damage and apply the element to those balls as well. When the Wayna comes down, it will get reduced resistance to the element you brought it down with and you have a short window to damage it while stunned. Even vulnerable, it can still feel too short, so you may have to repeat this process a couple of times. It has the same attack pattern, so use that to guide when to time your skills or bursts, which will depend on your team. My general rule of thumb is to preempt your damage window for its third appearance as that's the best time to deal damage to it before it floats. At least in this way, it's somewhat more predictable than the ruined serpent from before. Still, it's very, very annoying that we get such short damage windows. As I'm finishing it off, I realized I could have just saved my burst since it was close to death already, so this is an example of what not to do when saving your energy for the next chamber. For the last chamber, we start with Usia aligned suppression mechs. Target the ranged mech to the right since the melee one will naturally approach you and get grouped with the other. This is a relatively straightforward fight and you just want to watch out for their attacks since they can stagger and interrupt you. After the first pair is gone, a similar second pair will spawn but their positions are now reversed. So just like before, head towards the ranged one and deal with them while they're grouped up. This final half has an Aeon Blight Drake boss in it. While it's down, you can take that time to recharge your bursts before it flies up. You'll then need your archer to shoot it down, and you should aim at its glowing weak points, which can be the wings, chest, or head. While it's disabled, take the chance to deal as much damage to it as you can. This boss doesn't have other complicated mechanics, and its attacks can be quite predictable, especially in its ground state. So this is really just a DPS check of how quickly you can kill it, but if you got through the previous bosses, this should be a piece of cake. When it starts doing a charging up animation, it will expose a weak point once more, which you'll want to shoot like I did with its head. Otherwise, it will either fly up again or absorb an element and increase its resistance to that element. Just pay attention to its glowing parts to know what to hit. Bring it down, keep attacking it, and repeat the process till it's finished. And that's going to be it for this Abyss Guide. Comment down below what you think of the enemies in this Abyss Cycle and what teams you use to take those bosses down. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care!
created another universe. <laughs>